The Collaboration Conversation is brought to you by Project Brickworks, the new arts ministry dedicated to equipping Christians to use their talents and gifts to bring others into a relationship with King Jesus. Project Brickworks is a crowdfunded nonprofit ministry made possible by amazing, generous folks like you, and we are so grateful. We created the Collaboration Conversation as a way for Christians to share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the gifts and talents that God has given them. Today's very special guest is someone that I have been really excited to talk to on this show for quite some time, Mr. Jared O'Flaherty. Jared is the award-winning filmmaker behind the Christian crime drama series Vindication that released in 2000, 2019. His previous works include the feature film My Son and the World War II documentary We Were There. Jared, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Good morning. And uh, we're so excited to have you. Yeah, good morning to both of you. So we met you, the, the two of us met you at the uh, Christian Worldview Film Festival a couple of years ago, I think. I mean, it, it was a pretty brief conversation. So we don't know you real well, and I thought maybe you could take a few minutes to tell us about yourself, your family, uh, your career, um, anything that our listeners might find interesting to, to as we try to learn more about you. Yeah, sure. Well, before I mention that, you know, you'd mentioned when we met back at the Christian Worldview, and that's after I got to see Sarah performing in in a film, and I, I was just starstruck and probably nervous. So if it was a brief conversation, that was probably because of me being like, oh my goodness, I'm talking to a star right <laughs> no, now. No, not even. That's Quit funny. that. That was awesome. I totally remember meeting you that day. There, we met a lot of people that day. Yes. Um, and I just remember being really interested in all the things that you've got going on. So I, like I said earlier, I've actually been, you have been on our guest list since yes since we had the idea of this i was like we have i know he's super busy but we have to talk to him so we at least have to ask yes so this has been really really um exciting i've been really preparing for this because i've been really excited about it so that's great well yeah so a short background um i I never set out in uh, my adult life to be a filmmaker um i have a background in information technology i actually straight out of high school, got hired into uh, working IT uh, for a Fortune 500 uh, 500 corporation. So I never went to college or anything like that, especially not film school, just started working in the IT world. Uh, Met my future wife at at a very young age. She was like 15. I was 18. We dated for a couple years until she was legally old enough to get married. (laughs) And then uh, we got married and uh, started a family not long thereafter. So I think she was like 21 and we already had three kids. So I'm working in IT, we've got this budding family, um, but uh, the church that we had met at and attended and served in, uh, you know, had some opportunities for me to shoot little videos and edit them together for events and things like that. And over time, as technology um, got cheaper, you know, to get high quality <laughs> video and sound and, and editing and all that sort of stuff, well, the the opportunities to us as a church and, and for me began to grow. So we started doing some small music videos, documentary. And, and that just kind of started snowballing into bigger and bigger projects to where in uh, 2015, we did this short film, just a single short film called Vindication that was going to go into some festivals. And uh, well, it didn't end as a short film, uh, as you can tell for us having this conversation. So uh, yeah, it has grown now into a, a series that has multiple seasons, is stretched to multiple continents. And I've been able to work with now hundreds of people uh, on the series uh, but yeah, that's kind of kind of the background of, of of me and how I got here. That is incredible. So wait, you you got into IT without going to school, like at all? How did how did you get into that? Um, so my senior year of high school, I was in an internship program and I was able to go volunteer at an IT company. And I thought I'm going to be like, you know, writing web pages and on computers. No, for that whole like semester, they stuck me like shuffling papers. And on the spring break of my senior year, instead of going out to the beach or doing a trip, I asked this company, Hey, can I come in and work a full 40 hour week? but I actually touch the computers and stuff. (laughs) So uh, they let me do that, you know, and that time they were able to be like, okay, this kid, you know, he, he knows enough to, you know, he he can do some things and he learns quick, you know, he's young. Um, So after that, for like the remainder from spring break till the end of the year, they let me do computer stuff and then brought me on as a, my job title was, part-time summer summer temporary hire. I mean, it was the most <laughs> the most uh, temporary it's possible seasonal, title you could get, yeah, totally. but it got me in the door. So I was able to work hard. And within a few yeah. months, they're like, we depend on this guy. Let, let's keep him around. And that on-the-job training, you know, 
uh, I think you're learning at, at hyperspeed compared to a classroom, you know, totally. Um, you, you've got people around you, you're hands on. So I was able to learn things, do some technical certifications and stuff like that. But it was just on the job training that I, I was fortunate to have that opportunity. Well, is it the same with the church that you attended as far as like video? Like I'm also self-taught. Is that what that was? It just was like, hey, we have this need. And you were like, cool, let me figure this out. Or did you have any classes? How did how did you? Yeah, yeah. So same story behind that. So my this seems like this was a transformative year for me, my senior year. Uh, But my graduation gift from high school for my parents was a really nice laptop. You know, at Mm -hmm. the time it was about a twenty. $2,500 $2,500 laptop, which was pretty nice. So, you know, I had it and, and knew you could do some little video editing with it. And then we go to summer camp that year. And there's one of the like junior high kids had a little uh, high eight camera that was sitting in the bunks. He wasn't doing anything <laughs> with it. And I'm like, Hey, if you're not going to use that. Can I, can I shoot with that? And you got to think back then, this is, you know, turn of the millennium or, you know, around the year 2000, everyone didn't have a v- camera video camera in their pocket right if you want to see something you had to bring a physical video camera so the parents back home had never seen what goes on at youth camp for the most part so here i was i was able to pick up this this kid's camera go video stuff when the 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 camp was over go home uh, plug it into my nice laptop i had and edit together what we had shot and then for the the parents and all the people that you know provide funding and whatever for the first time, they got to see and experience what the teenagers were doing at camp. And for me, that was the really the first time for me to have a captive audience. And I was getting to tell a story. I was telling the story of youth camp and everyone was just glued to the screen. And it was like, hey, I enjoy this. This is kind of neat, you know, and but you know what? I think I could do better than that one. So what happens the next time event comes up, I'm doing <laughs> a little bit better video. I'm, I'm yeah. tweaking some things, doing things a little bit better. That is awesome. That's so cool. What a blessing to that church that you just jumped in and saw the opportunity. That's very cool. That is neat. So um, just as a mom, I'm going to jump back just a, just a second. You got three kids? I have four now. Yeah, have we had now. three in very short period of time, uh, three girls, and, and my wife felt like she was, was finished and she was a just a mother of daughters, you know? And and while I was content with that, I still held out hope that uh, God would side (laughs) with me and get a boy. And so seven years later, yeah, we got a little boy now too. So sweet. So what are their ages? The oldest right now is 16. uh, And then I've got one turning 15 this month and I have a 13 year old and the little boy six. So cute. Oh, that's awesome. Well, precious. Yeah, I'm a mom. I have to talk about my kids. So, I, you know, always want to know what everybody else is. The teenagers, I didn't have to worry so much. The six-year-old, I had to go say, hey, daddy's doing something <laughs> right now. Don't come in and, and, you know, shoot me with a Nerf gun or uh, throw anything at me. So That's awesome. That's fun. All right. So for most folks, this last year has been kind of tough, um, but uh, especially the uh, in the TV and film industry, it feels like everything just really shut down. But not you. Uh, y'all have been pretty busy with vindication, your TV series. So um, what's what's that been like um, over the, p- the past few months filming that? Yeah, so we were scheduled to shoot episodes one and two of season two, uh, like the first week of April 2020. I think we all remember what, what the world <laughs> looked like then. I mean, we yeah. had flights booked, we had locations, we had everything lined up. However, that was going to be the only vindication shooting happening in 2020 because I was working again, a corporate it job. I'd kind of finished up vindication and moved on to the next phase of life, uh, of working that job. And I was going to, my family agreed I could use my vacation time for 2020 to shoot two episodes. Well, because of the shutdown and everything, the company I was at at the time had, had to do furloughs. Uh, and, and I was one of those, I was actually brand new with the company and during that furlough of, of not doing anything, not having any work, um, is when the opportunity to do a full season two came about. So the reason we're getting to do that was because of what happened with COVID and with the furloughs. Wow. Had they come to me and said, hey, we want you to do a full season two, while I had that very comfortable, nice paying corporate job, I, I would have had to decline because yeah. of the security in that. Um, so it's kind of like God had different plans in 2020. Wow. He always that, does. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not upset with it. I'm, I'm happy with it now because uh, exciting to be to be doing this. Um, but yeah, so we were scheduled to shoot in April. We were able to postpone that to June. I had to because of our you know, our budget level and stuff. We don't get to uh, test everyone three times a day and quarantine them in hotels and all that. So I really had to check with our cast and crew and gauge everyone's comfort level and sensitivities to the matter because, because people are in different spectrums there, you know, uh, some healthy people that, 
uh, you know, maybe don't get sick a whole lot and more comfortable being around others to those who have, you know, immunocompromised or whatever else, probably not the best thing. But, but fortunately, everyone that we had was uh, comfortable being a part of it. So we were able to shoot two episodes in June. We shot three more in November. Uh, just earlier this week, wrapped up another episode. And so far, we haven't had any, uh, any outbreaks or, you know, people passing it. Now, a lot of our team uh, away from vindication has, has uh, contracted COVID and oh, no. gotten no. through it. Uh, no, nothing serious, nobody in the hospital or anything Good. like that, you know? Um, but it's also kind of given us that herd immunity on set where most everyone has, has been through it and, and, and knows they're able to handle it. So, um, you know, has it been easy? No, it's something else you have to think about and you already have sure. so many things on a film set to consider. That's another one, you know, and, and I do find myself sometimes, I'm not going to say policing, but I'm paying attention. Hey, oh, mm-hmm. that yep. person's a little more sensitive. Let's make sure we all keep our distance. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the past, you're just focused on filming. Totally. So um, because you have, and we are currently getting ready to start shooting in a couple weeks um, over at Living Word, we have had to have so many meetings, literally just about COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Other pre-production matters. That's for another day. We have to talk about COVID. What are we going to do? things like that. Can you talk to us because you have such a wide array of people who have different concerns and things like that? You know, what are your protocols? What what are you guys doing? What have you found works the best um, on your set? Yeah, oh man, you're getting down to the meat. That's, that's I'm that's just curious. The, the secret, that's the, like the secret recipe, right? Is it? So. Well, I mean, well, let me say this, there are there are productions, you know, that are and I don't remind me, is your production SAG? No. Okay. So SAG productions have a very exhaustive list of things that must right. happen and things like that. So I'm just, I'm curious, did you take SAG, SAG's um, recommendations and guidelines and then just kind of tweak them or, or how did you guys come up with your, what, what was going to work for you? Yeah. Um, before we did even our first shoot in June, I had personal uh, zoom meetings or phone calls with every single member of our cast and crew. Wow. You know, and ask them how they feel about it. You know, what their concerns are, um, you know, how they feel about masks, how they feel about tests, all those sort of things. That way I knew who we were dealing with. And, and if I, I don't know if I've ever revealed this before, but we put a number one, two or three next to everyone in our contact directory, three being the most sensitive to it. One being the people that, uh, don't care. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just to be, just to be frank. Right. Totally. Okay. So, you know, we had that kind of list. So that way we knew. And then when we would have a, a, a level three person on set, we would go around, let everyone know, Hey, everybody needs to have a mask on uh, especially if you're around this person. Uh, there were some cast members we gave their own rooms to when we wow. were on a set, you go to this room, you sit there, nobody else is in there. We'll bring you out to shoot. And then you go back to that room. Wow. Uh, food was different. We used to have, you know, some, some, veggie trays and different things you could come and <laughs> things you can go get. touch with your fingers <laughs> yeah we don't have that anymore you know it's, it's for the most part individually packaged and wrapped so yeah it was a very personal thing talking to each person making uh, those those things ready we have a lot of uh, crew members that are family members you know oh, yeah. so when the two of them are in the grip truck i don't think they need to be masked up and and right. socially right. distanced and all that when they go home and ride in the car together and totally you know so that's a family member that those sort of things so um, so yeah, that, that was kind of it as opposed to just this broad, okay, everyone wears a mask, everyone gets their uh, temperature, yeah. everyone wears it. You know, we, we just kind of took it more on a case by case. Some days were a lot locked down and tighter other days. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a big thing. That's because of the size of the crew, who was there, those sort of things. Yeah. I love that you did that very individually as opposed to just kind of that blanket rule. Um, yeah. my, I'll, I'll throw one more thing in. So yeah. my, my stance on it is I want everyone who comes to a vindication set when they leave to feel that proper precautions were taken and that they felt safe on set. Absolutely. That, that has always been my goal. And, and like I said, some people to feel that way, it's at a different level than others, mm-hmm. you know? So, and that's why I kind of had the number system and even new people that are coming in for episodes we're shooting a month from now, I have the same conversation with them. And if we have someone who's higher, higher sensitivity, I make sure everyone again knows, Hey, we're going to be respectful of that person and, and make sure that they get to leave and say that they felt comfortable with our safety. I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really cool. And, um, and it obviously has worked since you said you didn't have any tests, any positive tests yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that's kind of one person shows up and you don't, you can do everything right. And yeah. that could not be the it's case. So I'm thankful that uh, lots of prayer has gone in that God has yeah, protected us. In that absolutely. Way. That's so cool. 
Well, so our podcast is about talents and gifts. And obviously, from watching season one, you're a very gifted storyteller. But what are some of the, your other talents and gifts? And, and maybe you can you might want to expand more on that, too. But just um, things that you, you've been, become aware of and that you know God gave you and um, just helps you to, to be a better communicator and filmmaker. Um, probably for most people, it's hard to talk about themselves and, oh, here yeah. are my talents and gifts. Sarah, tell me about all your gifts and talents. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, it, that's hard for everyone to talk about. Sure. I recently, within uh, probably the last year or so, was fortunate to reconnect with two different people that I had known um, 20, 25 years ago in high school. Uh, and had not really had any contact with them since then. We uh, just got, in, and it wasn't like social media was, you know, just running into each other and, and getting to be around each other. And, and anyway, both of them completely separate made these observations. They're saying, you know, Jared, what I remember about you uh, is that you were so good with people. And that was something I never had thought of myself about. But if this was an impression someone had 25 years ago and still remembered, I thought it was neat. And then one of the other, the other individual said, yeah, I always remember you were good with words. And I thought, well, okay, that's interesting. So for these two people that I met, you know, got reconnected with at separate times, separate locations to have that feedback. And it just kind of resonated with me that, man, those things really apply to what I'm doing with filmmaking right now. Cause I'm dealing with lots of people and uh, you know, crafting words into stories. Now doing interviews like this, I don't think is what they make good with words. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing these great. Up. <laughs> well, and, and while you're right. While it is a little uncomfortable to talk about it, um, we, we have, we're kind of learning that when you name it, then you're far more aware of the things that God's using you in those, uh, you know, to do build, uh, building the kingdom, those kinds of things when you're kind of aware of what's going on. So for you to say, you know, crafting words, that just makes sense when you look back and go, yeah, that's what I do kind of all day. And it's, can, it can be on the front end of storytelling, but it can also be at the back end with editing and switching things up to make it, you know, more clear. So, I mean, that's great that, that both your friends, you know, identified that Affirmed for you. that, yeah. Yeah, Very if there's cool. a, if there's a, another gift to point out that I, I think maybe is unique or whatever that, that God point out to me, you know, look, you always hear about people that are you know, left side of the brain, right side of the brain, meaning very creative and artsy and can get out there. And then you have other people that are good with mathematics and numbers and whatever. Well, I don't think I really excel at either side of those. I have a good balance of them, you know, uh, in IT, I, I can be a computer programmer and come out and write algorithms and functions and create all these things and see how they fit together, you know, where I can can do really well balancing our budget and moving funds and things for vindication. Whereas at the same time, I can come up with some crazy ideas and some weird ideas and unique ways to tell a story. So having that balance, I think really has helped vindication to continue and succeed um, because I am able to, you know, handle both sides of that. And people have commented on set sometimes, man, Jared, you're, you're good at the fact that you can do this creative, but you also can manage things well and do that. So like I said, I don't think I'm super talented on either side of those, but I have a nice balance. But that that in and of itself is a talent and a gift (laughs) that God gave you. You know what I'm saying? Like that being so in the middle and being able to do both is, is huge, especially as a independent filmmaker when you right. have to do that and you have to wear multiple hats you can't just wear one sure. i think that's cool and i also want to affirm what your friend said about the people thing I, I know that you and i have not spent any time together other than that conversation in person but i want to say that just from the conversations we've had on facebook from hearing about how you have handled the covid precautions on your set by really being personal about it and reaching out to your cast and crew and talking to them and gauging that I think that that speaks volumes about your people skills. And so I just wanted to affirm that that is definitely a talent and gift that God has given you, uh, just a people skill. It's really, really cool to see. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay, so we've talked about vindication, but for those of our listeners who have been living under a rock and have no idea uh, (laughs) what it is, can you tell us a little bit about vindication and and the storyline and and about the show? Sure. So the elevator pitch, I guess, is that Vindication is a faith-based crime drama series, Uh, you know, 25 to 30 minute episodes. Each episode deals with a crime of the week, so to speak, where you follow our our lead character, uh, Detective Gary Travis, and he investigates these crimes. And, you know, as an audience member, I think you're watching, trying to figure it out yourself, trying to see what's going on. And with the title Vindication, that means that a lot of times uh, the way things look to be isn't how they actually are. 
And uh, through these investigations, our, our lead character also uh, has his own faith uh, open up and get explored. And he has to kind of decide where he is at on those things because God is continually uh, saying things to him through these cases that he's working on, and those continue to build. Uh, you also see his coworkers, his home situation, other things like that that he deals with, and those are the stories audiences have really enjoyed the most. You know, the crime of the week is fun, but we love the you know these ongoing stories about his family or coworkers or his boss you know, um, and, and how that plays into his life and his career. So yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I was just going to say that about the family. I, the crime stuff is really cool. Um, and the case of the week and trying to figure out what happened and who did it and all that good stuff. But the family stuff, I think was really was really special and really, really um, unique. And I really loved that aspect of the show. Um, so w- one thing I love about the show is that it's literally like nothing else out there. It is its own genre. Um, I think it's just really, really cool that that you've created something so unique and so special. So how did that come about? You talked about that your your church, uh, you guys created that short, but how did the idea for it come about? Did God download that to you? Did somebody else approach you with the idea? Was that all you? How did that how did that idea come to you? Um, so I'm not a big TV watcher. My wife definitely watches a lot more TV than I do. Uh, She's not really huge into the crime dramas, but she's had a few that she watches. And one night she was watching one of these crime drama shows. And I think I was just like laying in bed or came in and looked up at it. And I noticed that, you know, they start the show showing you what the crime is and then they have their title card and then they go about solving it. And I, I just kind of comments. I said, you know, they should do one where they don't show you the crime at the beginning. They start with the investigation. So not only are you trying to figure out who did it, you're also trying to figure out what actually what happened. happened. What's the end result here? And that was kind of the premise for our first episode. That, that's what happens in episode one of Vindication. And, you know, the idea to turn it into a series, it was not my idea. To say God downloaded, uh, maybe that's what happened. But basically they came to me after we had done our festival run and said, you know, hey, we'd like to see more of these. And I'm like, well, the story's over. Like, you know, we, we found out what happened with that crime. Like, ben no, Davies what, about is the, fine. what about the detective? Does he have other cases? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that's where it got started. And and I had more, the second episode really is based on my personal testimony. So it was an easy, I thought, hey, I got to do one. If I am blessed and honored to get to do a second, then I'm going to tell one of my favorite stories, you know, tweak it up a little bit, but I'm going to share my testimony. Uh, they're in episode two. And then what happens? All right, we want some more episodes. So then it had to expand a bit. That is so cool. That is awesome. Yeah, you know, there's a funny story I didn't mention here, but I, the week that we were filming episode two, remember how I said, I, I thought, oh, if I'm going to get a, we called it Vindication 2 at the time because it was just going to be one and two. And I was going to do my testimony. I had a business meeting that week um, for a software company I had developed. And we had gotten, after weeks of phone calls and emails, gotten a sit down meeting with the CEO of a company. It was a big, big deal. And I, uh, probably for the only time in my life, I sent out like a chain, hey, would you guys be praying about this? It's a, a huge meeting. And we go to the meeting with this guy and it was very obvious. I don't want to work with him. You know, this guy is just, it would be a miserable experience being involved. It was also a big letdown because we've been praying about it a whole lot. And I'm like, well, I can't pout about it for too long because I got to go film this vindication two thing starting on Friday, you know? And now I look back and think, oh, what if that meeting had gone well, you know, then this series would have never gone beyond just two episodes. It just would have been a one and a two wouldn't even be a series. And the the reach of of other countries and the opportunities for people and, you know, the gospel being shared with people on set with it, just all the things that have happened from it would have never existed or ever happened had that meeting gone the way I wanted it to. Absolutely. I think that that glory has to be given with the open doors and the closed doors there's so much there's so much glory to be given in closed (laughs) doors we pray for that literally all the time god please close the doors that we are not meant to walk through um that won't bring glory to you and 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 isn't part of your will and so i i think that that's awesome and that's a huge part of of the testimony and and how you've been obedient and sought prayer and and you know i've been faithful i just think that's really cool i remember there there was a phase around the time that this meeting and episode two thing happened that my wife and i because i was self-employed at that time and working on these software companies and doing that 
And it's like, we are praying so hard for these things to happen. And it seems like God doesn't answer them yet for vindication that we're not even praying about. We're just, <laughs> it's just kind of this thing. He keeps pouring out on it, you know, Hey Jared, yes. uh, we just got funding for two more episodes. Would you do that? And other filmmakers, you know, would, would have prayer chains and would faint and be like, yes. yes. And, you know, pr- uh, have a worship session for a week. Cause they got funding. And for us, it's just like, well, God keeps pouring out on this vindication guess thing. We'll I guess keep we'll doing keep it. doing it. Yay. <laughs> well, but a lot of people are praying over your show. So, right. You know. Yeah. I, I've learned that now. So yeah. it just took a while for me to uh, get on board <laughs> with, <laughs> with that being the big thing. Totally. That's so cool. That is awesome. That is awesome. And so for those who, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but you are, so intricately involved with this production you write you direct you produce you edit um created it i mean there's probably and you probably have hands and other things as well like hey that looks that lighting you know you probably have hands in all of it so i just i want to talk to you about what that's like on set how do you manage your different hats um as far as being a director and a producer and all of the things i just listed you know, we, I mentioned that we just wrapped up an episode here a couple of days ago, and we made the joke that I should buy like different hats, like one that says producer across <laughs> it and one that says director. So yes. that way, when I'm having conversations with people, people know, know what who, mode you're in. <laughs> yeah, they know who they're talking to at the moment, you know, <laughs> That's um, awesome. because we had like uh, some flights get rescheduled in the middle of the shoot, you know, and I'm over having that conversation and someone's like, Jared, quit worrying about that. You know, we, we got it covered. And I'm like, well, I need to put on my producer hat because producer Jared is worried about it right it's, now. You there know? you and, go. Um, so uh, I've never been on another set other you know, other than, than the ones that I'm kind of running. So I don't know how the others work. So this is just kind of all I know. So that that's what I do, but there's a great team of people. Don't don't get me wrong that are built around that all know their jobs. So the things that I fill in usually are like, "Uh, I don't want to spend any money on that. I'll just do it myself and we'll use our money towards things that end up on the screen. Totally. Oh, that's awesome. And so wearing so many hats, and I'm very familiar with that concept. um, Do you for me, I find that wearing one hat makes me better in other areas. So for example, being an editor makes me a better actor and then and vice versa. Do you find that that's the same with you? What are do you have any examples of of areas where you feel like being a producer makes you a better director, whatever it is? Yeah, um, definitely being an editor makes me a better director, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, the shoot we just wrapped up. I'm, I'm probably going to keep referencing it because it's fresh in my mind. But sure. there was one shot that we were getting and moving around, and I was like, Adam, hey, because our, our camera guy would keep kind of repositioning during a certain moment of a scene to, to get the rest of the scene. And I'm like, hey, we need to make sure that we get at least one shot where you don't move because that exact same spot every time is where you're moving and we're not going to have any way to cover it. There's, there's not going to be anything to cut to there. And that's editor Jared <laughs> yeah. and working as director Jared, you know, and then sure enough, he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. I mean, he just, he wasn't thinking that way, but I'm thinking editing wise, I got to have a spot during this little two seconds. What are we looking at? If you're always repositioning or we're flipped around, you know, that's not going to work. So the editor, and I wonder someone who's a director, that's not an editor. What do they do? What do they do when that (laughs) happens? Like, is it, is that where reshoots and other things come from? Or is that where really poor choppy scenes come from? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. So, so editor Jared really helps out director Jared. I would say that producer Jared hurts director Jared because producer knows he's got to get the location. <laughs> he's got to get all these things covered, how much time. Yeah. So it kind of limits and cramps down the creativity that is allowed, you know, Fair. Um, it's more like that shot's going to be a whole lot easier to get than that shot. So we're doing it that way. Whereas if you're a director that, that your producer is kind of just taking care of the things you ask for, yeah. maybe you don't throttle yourself quite as much. So. But does um, director Jared help producer Jared in the sense that you have a much more, you can, I don't want to say more realistic, but you're maybe able to give yourself a little bit more extra time than maybe a traditional producer who doesn't have any directing experience would, would do? Yeah, I think so. I, I know what shots are going to be worth the time and, and money, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, th- this shot's going to look really cool. It's going to take us two hours, but yeah, we're, it's going to be worth, worth it. it. Yeah. As opposed to something that's, oh, we're going to have this great big shot of people moving. It's like, yeah, it's going to take two hours and that's going to be a tiny little non-consequential moment. Why waste your time and energy on that? So yeah, yeah I think so. Very cool. Okay, so it's the hardest question we'll ask all day. Which hat do you prefer? If you had to pick one to be an only, only one, one for an entire 
maybe an entire episode, which hat would you pick? about casting department really? now we, we have a, we have a casting director who does a lot of that but man for me it is like christmas when those audition tapes start rolling in each one is like a new gift and, and I'm, I'm so surprised by this answer <laughs> i'm so excited keep going <laughs> yeah i'm like so uh, part of my interest hobbies in the past I'm, I'm a football fan and and uh you know the draft is kind of a big thing of putting together your team you know yeah. who's yeah. going to be your star and who's you know who are the supporting players and how do you build this great team you know drafting and i feel like casting's the same thing you know where i'm getting to put together this team you know who who, who are we going to go to battle with for this episode who are going to be our people and you know to be able to look through those auditions and you never know which one is going to be the you know, kind of yeah. moment. Um, and you, you have also that see moment. You, if, if you've written stuff, you're like, man, this scene is not very good. And then some actor makes it good just by their performance. And it, it's exciting. So I, I really enjoy that. That's like a part of the process I love is when that starts happening. It can get frustrating sometimes. Like recently we had a role that was like three or four lines and we had like 40 tapes come in for it. Oh, so wow. I'm like, how do you decide when it's just a couple of lines yeah. through these 40 tapes and you keep, you know, you see, you see them so many times, but again, just that building the team, that process is my favorite. Very cool. Well, talk to me a little bit about that casting process. You said you have a casting director. So mm -hmm. it sounds though, from what you just said that you watch all your tapes, do you have the casting director kind of weed through them first? What's that, what's that process like, since it seems like you're really, really um, involved. If someone's going to take the time and effort to memorize our script, to get their backdrop and camera and encode the video and send it to us, I'm going to watch it, you yeah. know, even if I already know who I, I, I maybe want, you know, maybe the first one that comes in, I'm like, oh, that was awesome. And that's <laughs> kind of the person I targeted. Um, I'm still watching all of them. And yeah. I, I think they deserve that, you know. Absolutely. And I'd love to give them all feedback and, and tell them thank you. It's just the, the sheer volume. That there's no way to do that. That, that would be a, a full-time job for me. So, so I do watch them all. Um, our casting director, Ronnie Hummel, we, she and I have a great relationship. Um, so we'll back and forth on things. I'll let her know kind of what we're looking for. Um, but when we get to the, I don't ask someone for a tape unless there's like, yes, you could get this. We don't just get random. Oh yeah. You're the completely wrong for this role. So if tapes come in, it's already someone that, that we threw their headshot resume, demo reel, whatever we think. Yeah. This could definitely be the person. And Very then cool. we go from there. That's so cool. Well, so speaking about casting, there are actors out there listening. How, how can they get on your radar to be one of those people that you already know of and that you want to see um, what's the best way to get involved with, you know, when season three and four and five happens, <laughs> uh, what's, what's the best way to do that? Wow. Um, you know, people who are fans of the show and their names pop up because they're leaving reviews and they're commenting and they're sharing you remember those people's names. Now, this, this, sounds terrible. this is not uh, industry uh, <laughs> acting class information, but it's true, right? Yeah. When you see someone who's a big fan of the show and that, and then they come up in the auditions, you're kind of like, hey, I, I know this person. You know, they like our I, show. I like <laughs> so, and I'm saying that because we have literally thousands of people right now that are submitting, that are mm -hmm. you know, putting stuff in. So you ask, how, how do you get your name known? Well, some of those people, when it's like, hey, I know you. Oh, it's because I know you because you're always promoting the show and you're a fan yeah. and that sort of thing. So I don't know that I would advise that to all actors. Oh, yeah, go uh, kiss up to every show you want to be <laughs> on and maybe they'll remember you. That's just this is a vindication way of doing things. Um, as far as audition tapes, the people who take the biggest risks, um, I think, usually are the ones that that book roles. If, if you can just show that you happen to memorize the script and you can squeeze your way through it, typically when you're up against 30 other people, that's not going to get you there. You know, yeah. uh, there have been multiple times where I had a vision for a character, but I saw someone else's audition where they really took a risk and went their route with it and changed my thinking where I'm like, I like that better than what I had in mind. You know, so cool. and then once that happens, you can't get them out of your mind. That, yeah, that's, and that's yeah, it. Th it's a done deal. <laughs> This is this is who we want, you know. Also, whose tape is the most interesting to watch? We had a recent casting where there were several really good ones and a couple that we looked at and said, okay, which one's it going to be? And it's like, you know what? This audition, even though some characteristics of this person maybe don't match what we originally envisioned, um, 
I can't look away from that audition. Like they're just yeah. interesting. You know, they added things, they, they, they did stuff. And I'm not talking about props and all that, but the delivery and the yeah. performance and the work when it was interesting to watch, then it's going to be interesting for our audiences. Absolutely. That's really cool. Well, okay. S- switching gears a tiny bit from actors. We, you, I remember seeing on social media, you guys posting about all of the countries that you guys are now in and that it got overdubbed in different languages. Have you been involved in that process? Has that just been really cool to just sit back and and watch your distribution company do? What has that been like for you? Right, yeah. I, I haven't been real involved in that other than the fact that they said, hey, we need you to deliver these episodes with no dialogue. We need yeah. everything else, all the sound effects, music, you know, all of that, but no dialogue at all. Um, because some of these other countries, they're not just going to subtitle it. They're going to go out and hire actors and actresses young and old, all of these to come and dub the whole season, not just one episode, not just one that movie, the whole season. That is so <laughs> exciting. Like, you know, you're doing something right when that's happening. That is really cool. Yeah. The, the, they, and, and that these other actors in other countries got to come in and watch and then had to recreate, recreate the whole, it. You know, like there's a Detective Travis over in, you know, Egypt somewhere. And there's <laughs> yeah. a Detective Travis in Germany who he was that character for the whole season. So, uh, you know, for me, I, I got to just at the end, hey, can, can I see those? And I get them back and I get to hear the voices. And I would go to certain characters, you know, the, the old lady in this episode or the little girl in that episode. I'm like, hey, I want to hear what they did for that. <laughs> and you get to sure enough, hear a little girl or whatever. So it's just been kind of an honor. Like, wow, they, they thought enough of our project to go out and spend money and hire people to do this, to have it now forever in their language, in that language. And in their country. That is really cool. And you're creating jobs for actors. Way to go. You're, it, even even after filming is wrapped, still creating jobs. I love right, it. That's, right. that's very cool. Well, so a, a little bit on that same line of, about actors getting getting involved with, with um, your projects. What about filmmakers? I mean, do you have any good advice for somebody who just wants to break into independent filmmaking? Yeah, I, I could say a lot on that. You know, the kind of the going phrase right now is just do something. There are a lot of filmmakers that want to sit around and talk about it. No, oh, if I get money or, oh, I have this great idea, but they don't do anything with it. And sadly, they don't have any excuses anymore when everyone in their pocket has a, a mobile uh, film studio that they can can get good quality audio and good quality picture. So if you're sitting around talking about it, you know, you're not you're not going to go anywhere. You've got to do something and have something to show. And yeah, it may not be what you dreamed of in the highest quality, but but people can see your talent uh, if it's there within it. My other advice would be in something that I see a lot is a lot of independent filmmakers um, have big ideas, big visions, and maybe they'll go out and do it. The problem is they create something that nobody else wants to watch, right? <laughs> no, and, and no, an audience. <laughs> no, no. If that's what you want to do and that's your passion is just to create that, then, then so be it. But if it's what you want to become a filmmaker, like it's something you do on a consistent basis, that's something you've got to consider is, you know, how does this line up with what people want to watch? You know, yeah, yeah, look true. at the popular shows, yeah. look at the popular types of entertainment, popular YouTube channels, whatever. Look at what people want to watch and make sure you're in line with that a little bit. Absolutely. You know? um, the quality c- can vary and, and you don't have to have the best possible thing as long as you're telling stories or you're focusing on something that people do want to watch. It's been a, an epiphany to me r- recently because I deal with so many actors and I'll hear when they get on set, the, the most pop, the thing that actors on set want to talk about is always their next project or whatever else they're working on. Right. I'm always like, <laughs> can we talk about vindication? What about, <laughs> but no. what, what about the show that you're on set for right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that's always the conversation and I'll hear actors talk, Oh, this project, Oh, it's so well written or, Oh, we have this amazing, this department and that department. And a lot of these I'll have a chance to go see. And while they're well done or you know there's some good qualities i'm like i could never show this to my brothers or my wife or my children yeah or my aunts and uncles or people at church because they would turn it off after the first five minutes because they would be bored with it and i know yeah. because i've gone to some film festivals and come home like hey y'all gotta watch this and they're like dad or, or jared why are you making <laughs> us want this is not any good yeah so and it's not about the quality these these are the things that the actors love because oh it's got a great script or it's got great this or they shot on an air, airy camera or all that but 
you got to make something that people want to watch. So yeah, less, less I, I've kind of learned value. that. And so that would be my advice to filmmakers and not like, Oh, look at me. I'm, I'm great with vindicate. I just, hey, people like crime drama shows, right? Yeah. That's why there's 20 of them running at any given time. So at least, you know, people are watching those, you yeah. know, and, and the few shows that I have watched, are things that have been very popular that have stood the test of time. So I'm watching those and thinking, Hey, people enjoy this. So let me try to emulate that, but we're going to do it in a, in a, in a capsule that, that uh, God exists and, and where he he's a part of the story. Amen. That's so cool. I think that's really good advice because I think a lot of people, like you said earlier, get caught up on production value. They get caught up on, well, if I had more money or if I had a better camera um, and while those things are important later in your career, when you're just starting out as an independent filmmaker, just getting it done with a really solid story. I think, I think you nailed that. I think that's super important. So good advice for our listeners. Lesson. Um, so we've talked so much about vindication and uh, I want to give our listeners a little, uh, a little taste of it if they haven't seen it. So here is the trailer for season one of vindication. This is the second homicide we've had in 14 months. Are we sure this is a homicide? My understanding is that there is a concern for safety in the neighborhood, and we're here to help out in any way we can. The East Bank community remains on edge after the grisly discovery of two bodies. It's an embarrassment. That's what it is. I know you don't have any leads. What am I looking at? Has Dad said anything about what's going on at work? This is off the record. That means you don't talk about it, okay? from me to try to reach out to you at all just stop it stop being a cop for just one minute i can't guys move hey you can't take my phone watch me you have no idea what you're getting yourself into do you even want to catch the guy i don't understand it's just unusual maybe god is trying to tell you something how do i make it stop please hands where i can see him We love this show, and we are so excited that you guys got a second season. Uh, so before your second season airs, where can people get caught up on season one? So uh, there's two main places. Redeem TV. Uh, it's a donor-funded streaming service that focuses on faith entertainment. Uh, you can create an account there and watch all of season uh, one unedited, you know, director's original vision ready for you in beautiful HD uh, for free on Redeem TV. And then when season two comes out, uh, it'll be for those who do donate to the service that'll be able to watch that. And then Pure Flix, uh, the series is uh, uh, Pure Flix original series now. And so it's, it's so on cool. Pure Flix streaming. Yeah, it's on Pure Flix streaming. Season one is and season two will launch there first. Very cool. It is available. I'll also mentioned on DVD for people that want to own it for all time we've got it there um and then um i think there's a few like you can rent it type places vimeo and amazon prime yeah where can you get the dvd it's on amazon i think amazon? Uh, target.com okay. best buy i mean it, it's, okay. it's hard to, to not find it it's hard it's hard to, it. to lose Perfect. it yeah i just want to make sure we said that so yes well, good yes. well so you did talk that you just fil finished um filming i think you said episode six so of you season two right of season two right so you're um, heavy into into this new season. Um, any release information that you can give us, like dates? And if not, that's fine. We just thought we'd ask. Yeah, I honestly do not know. It's not that I'm keeping it secret. I don't know okay. yet. Uh, that'll be a decision uh, probably from Pure Flix on yeah. when they want to release it. Uh, I'm hoping sooner rather than later, obviously. <laughs> um, I, I know it will be in 2021. So okay, uh, it, it could be cool. a couple of months from now. It could be you know towards the fall or later. I, I don't know. Um, originally, I'd heard that the first five episodes were going to get released of season two and kind of give you a taste of that. And then the, the following five would be later on. Uh, but there's also a chance they may trickle it out one episode a week or do all 10 at once. I, I don't know yet. Very um, cool. I'm, I'm just making it. <laughs> You're along for the ride on this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Well, so you, you were talking about Pure Flix and how season two is going to be exclusively at least at first on Pure Flix. And so what has the relationship been like there? Have you already sent in the first five episodes and like that it's locked and ready to go? Or are you guys still working on the first five? 
Yeah, I hope I don't get, I mean, a lot of that is business discussion. So I don't okay. know how much of that I'm, I'm allowed to talk about or should. Um, I will say they were very pleased with season one and how it was received by their audience and have taken approach of you guys go do your thing uh, and give us a season two. That That has kind of been the approach so far. Nice. So um, obviously we're hoping that when they see it, they're happy with that. And Absolutely. I, I'm excited. I think it's a step up. Uh, it's a little bit different route with a season two. You know, the season one, when you're doing these stories where you do a head fake, you know, of oh, it looks like it's this guy, but it's not. It's actually <laughs> this guy. You can only do that so many times before audiences start saying, okay, I know in this episode that guy's going to look guilty and it's actually going to be this other guy. <laughs> yep, so you have fresh. to get more creative with things, you yep. know? And so I call them the low hanging fruit, you know, the easy things to grab. We've kind of done those. So we've got to get more creative and I don't ever want to get where we're just repeating the same stories. So, you know, if there's an approach I take, it's when you sit down to any episode of vindication, I want you to have no, no clue what type of ride you're about to be in for, you know, Absolutely. Um, we've got some now where guess what? The guy who looks guilty. He really is at the end. <laughs> it's really and someone else is vindicated. This the person who accused them that nobody believed that's the person who gets vindicated. Oh, so cool. we'll take some different, different routes and do some different things in season two. Uh, but, but as far as pure flicks is concerned that they liked what we did in season one and they've given us kind of open, open range to do what we want. That's awesome. That was the perfect answer. I know you said you were nervous about saying something that you shouldn't say, but I love that answer. That was awesome. That's great. Yeah. That yeah. was so cool. Thank you. Well, congratulations on that. That's, that's really huge. And we are so excited for you. We know you are very busy with season two. So thank you for taking your time to come chat with us. We are so excited for you. We are so inspired by you and on the work that you do. And um, we are just thrilled to see, to see what you've got coming up in 2021. Yeah. Well, uh, you've talked a lot about Jared and his talents and, and inspired by me and all that kind of stuff. Let's, uh, I do got to take the moment to say all throughout this process, God's hand and what he's been doing has been so, so evident. Mm -hmm. uh, and if he ever decided to step away, even an inch, we're toast and vindication <laughs> is falling flat. Amen, you know, right? there are so, so many things that could go wrong that I get to the end of it and go, how did we get here? How did this happen? You know, from, from wearing all the hats to our funding levels to so, you know, to COVID interference, all these different things, you know, you look at it and it goes beyond explanation and beyond reason of how we've been able to do this and how we are at the place that we are now. So uh, definitely want that to be in there that uh, uh, God has, has really been a part of everything that has made this production successful. It hasn't been uh, Jared's willpower and talents sure. and all that. It, it's been him leading the way and me just kind of saying what do you need me to do yeah but you've been really really obedient and really open and i think that that's really that he's been blessing that i think that that's just really really cool really awesome oh amen for more information on project brickworks and how you can get involved visit us online at projectbrickworks.org and don't forget to follow us on instagram and twitter like our facebook page and if you're watching this on youtube make sure to hit the subscribe button give us a like and turn on notifications if you're listening to this on a podcast, please subscribe and be encouraging with your rating. We love y'all. Be blessed and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Jared. Thanks. Thanks.